Hi from my journal and welcome back to my channel. I'm Denise and today we are reviewing 4 new inks from Ferris Wheel Press. Starting things off with the Fairy Tales Collection's Blue Barrel Tonic. This is the 6th ink to come out in the Down the Rabbit Hole collection. This mesmerizing high shading premium ink is a combination of two hues, periwinkle blue and rose gold shimmer. So let's see how it performs on several types of paper. Um, here I am swatching it on my ink swatch journal. The paper used here is 100 GSM and upon initial swatching, Blue Burial Tonic appears more on the blue side than purple. I also use my dip pen to test out Blue Burial Tonic. My dip pen has a rather broad nib and it makes it a little challenging to work with fountain pen inks. But with practice, I think I'm really going to enjoy using the dip pen with lighter colored inks. Of course, I couldn't wait to test out Blue Burial Tonic in a freshly cleaned fountain pen. Take care when filling up your fountain pens in the 20ml bottle. It can be a little challenging, but hopefully you won't spill your ink. You can clearly see the rose gold shimmer if you have clear demonstrator fountain pens. I normally gravitate towards darker, deeper shades, but Blue Barrel Tonic looks so nice on creamy paper. As for the vibe of Blue Barrel Tonic, I can't help but imagine like Alice in Wonderland stumbling upon the elixir labeled Drink Me. And tempting as it may be, um, looking at the bottle, do not drink Blue Barrel Tonic. I've honestly never tried using brushes with fountain pen inks before, but with Blue Barrel Tonic, it's quite enjoyable for me to use it like a watercolor almost. So here I'm trying to draw a water dragon for a journal spread. I'm not sure if it ended up looking like a water dragon, but I was happy with how it turned out anyway. The ink looks really nice on thinner, less absorbent paper too. From the Fairy Tales collection, we jump to Ferris Wheel Press's Finer Things collection. First, let's watch Oyster Hour. According to the Ferris Wheel Press site, Oyster Hour celebrates timeless design. On its box, you can see several timepieces and watches. But to me, Oyster Hour is really evocative of old photographs hidden away in your grandparents' trunk 
or dedications written on the backs of family portraits or pictures of loved ones. So this shade is very romantic, subtle, and creamy. And it's perfect for writing about memories remembered, kept, and treasured. I paired Oyster Hour with my Ferris Wheel Press Carousel Fountain Pen in Lady Rose. Oyster Hour is really subtle. It can be a little too light at times for my taste, especially for writing longer journal entries. But it's perfect for writing letters to loved ones, friends, maybe even the odd lost love that you probably will never send out. Lady Rose really likes this shade. Oyster Hour looks nice with a medium-sized nib. This shade ink plus Ferris Wheel Press Carousel in Lady Rose is Chef's Kiss. I love the combination of Oyster Hour's subtle latte shade with my fountain pen's old rose color. I'm excited to try with Oyster Hour is to try it out with maybe a brush um, for journal spreads and drawing, things like that. Next, we have Steeped Umber. According to Ferris Wheel Press, the vibe of this ink is supposed to evoke sweet treats, home baked madeleines, biscuits at tea time, and a rich steeped dark tea. When I swatched this on my ink swatch journal, the color really reminded me of dried leaves and cold sweater weather. Since I live in the Philippines, we don't have four seasons. We don't have autumn, we don't have winter, but we do have two very distinct seasons, which is wet and hot and hot and dry. But this shade reminded me of growing up in Baguio City where we have colder temperatures, colder climates, and sometimes the leaves would turn brown, and it really reminded me of this lovely color. I love writing with steeped umber. I mentioned earlier that I gravitate towards deeper, darker colors, and I tend to like these colors for writing in my journals. The last ink in Ferris Wheel Press's Finer Things collection is called Spruce County Post and it's a deep, warm, pine green. For me, Spruce County Post is also a Baguio color because it really reminds me of how the trees, the pine trees look. It also reminds me of the paint scheme from cottages found in Camp John Hay. Cottages in John Hay when I was growing up were painted white and green, and this green really reminded me of that. This shade also reminds me of the color of our school uniforms in elementary school. I was so excited to unbox these beautiful inks and finally use them in my journal spreads. So there you have it guys, four new fabulous shades from Ferris Wheel Press. Hope you enjoyed this review. Bye for now.